it's 5.30, so we'll go ahead and open the hearing. Actually, it's a little past. Uh, no, exactly 5.30. We'll open the hearing of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we have two items on the agenda tonight. Um, and, uh, uh, but uh, my name is David Bloomberg. Uh, with me, sitting on the board, is Sarah Northrup, Maureen Scanlon, and Elizabeth Silver. The voting members, I think, are Sarah, Elizabeth, and me. And uh, Maureen is an associate member. Carolyn Mish is here from the Office of Planning and Sustainability, providing staff support. Um, we have three items on the agenda. First, we'll start with public comment, but uh, before we start, uh, first of all, notice that this hearing was published on October 10th and October 17th, 2019. Um, when we do hear the, the applications, we'll ask first that the applicant or the representative of the applicant address the board. The board will have a chance to ask and get questions answered from the applicant or the representative. After that, any members of the public who are here who would like to uh, address the application will be uh, free to do so. We ask that all questions and comments are addressed to the board, not to each other or to the applicant. Um, and we ask that everybody identify him or herself by name and address for the record that Carolyn is keeping. Uh, but first we open with public comment and this is an opportunity for members of the public to address the board on any matters other than those that relate to the two applications tonight. Are there any members of the here public here tonight for general comment? Seeing none, we'll move on. And the first item on the agenda is the request by O'Connell Development Group for a finding for a change in a non-conforming buffer for 23 townhouse units at 10 Holly Street, Northampton, map ID 32A-171. And we'll ask that uh, uh, you identify yourself and... Uh, yes, good evening. Yes. I'm Andrew Crystal, 51 Olander Drive in Northampton is my address. And with me is John Furman from our consulting engineers, VHB, and I'm not sure where he lives. I'm in Southampton. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so again, per the application, we my company has the um, former St. John Campus property under agreement. We're looking at doing a um, townhouse development. We're in the process with the planning board and the DPW now going through plan review. The, the plan that um, you just saw a moment ago. We have it. We have it, yes. Can, can Chuck Diesel back to the existing condition? So this, this is the existing condition. What you're seeing is the social center, which is behind the rectory. Um, so Philip's place would be toward the bottom of your sheet. The post office is, would be toward the top of your sheet. So this is that long single story building that's behind the church. <clears throat> and that's scheduled to come down if we go forward with the, the proposed development. The red line that you're seeing is the edge of pavement. And that's called out at, I think, 5.5 feet from the property line. So it's a pre-existing, non-conforming setback. The property we're looking at is, has been rezoned as now central business. The adjacent property is URC. So there's a requirement for a 30-foot buffer that the planning board can waive to 20 feet. We can't quite accomplish that, so we've come before this board for a finding that what we're proposing, which is, um, a townhouse development, and as you can see, called out in the red boxes, the, mm. the center box is the place where we're the very closest there. There's 10 and a half feet of green space landscaping, then that's the edge of pavement, which is a private patio. These are single family homes, privately owned. Um, they're all market rate condominiums. And then there's another 15 feet of patio space before you get to the building. So that's the um, least conforming situation of what we're proposing. As you go to the left of that page, you'll see that there's almost 20 feet of green space before you hit the pavement for the patio and then the buildings again are another 15 feet back. What's being proposed along the property line, and we've met with each of the abutters and understood what their concerns are, uh, is a row of uh, a combination of arborvitae, shrubs, and trees as shown along the property line behind us through single family homes. Is there anything else? Uh, curb cut. Is that them as well? Yes. Oh, okay. So, permit, actually. 
Uh, that's a special one. permit. And the, the curb cut for being 50 foot within uh, adjacent to the other one, adjacent curb cut. Um, that's a planning board thing. There was a, it's a special permit for more for than two, yeah. two, but this was a finding because I didn't realize it's that was on within 50 feet. Okay. So, yeah. can you walk me through that chart, sure. please? So the is uh, the pride. This is Holly Street here. Let me zoom up a little bit uh, on this as well. Uh, and uh, the red box is the area that we have in question. Uh, at the uh, uh, north side uh, of the property is the entrance or exit from the post office, which is a uh, exit only. So vehicles coming out of the post office come here. This curb cut is existing, um, and we're planning on reusing it. Your uh, zoning ordinance basically says that no part of a curb cut shall be within 50 feet of an existing curb cut. So it means the distance curb to curb has to be 50 feet. We have six because it's existing. So these two red lines represent where the curb cut would be if we had to bring that into compliance. Um, and you can see that the distance left here is not wide enough for the uh, width of the units plus the building setback. Uh, we can't move this curb cut any, we, we can move it some, but not enough to make any difference because of the church being right here as well. So that we, what we've done to try and create a separation is uh, we have to replace the sidewalks on Holly Street. So as part of that, we're putting in a rumble strip. Uh, if you're familiar with what that is, it's like the merging strip that you get on the highway. We're putting that between the two curb cuts. So there's some definition uh, between, so right now it's just one large curb cut. So you could actually turn in and hit the retaining wall because there's no definition there. So the, the rumble strip will provide a, a break between the two curb cuts. This would be exit out, and this curb cut will be enter and exit. How far back does that rumble strip grow? Because the note says crushed stone for the rock. The, 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 uh, yeah, so what's going on is uh, the rumble strip goes from the gutter line to the sidewalk. Oh, I see. The sidewalk you. continues through. The crushed stone is we actually have a retaining wall on our side as well, mm -hmm. so there's stone between the two retaining walls as a, as a treatment. Okay. And is that the only entrance and exit to your project, or am I looking at Phillips Place over here and seeing another one? Yes, you are looking at Phillips Place that's also existing. Uh, and right now it is unrestricted, so you can go in and out of it. Uh, what we are proposing is to have that be an entrance only. So this is uh, this will reduce uh, the, the traffic from the development on Phillips uh, Place because it's entrance only. Uh, this is uh, uh, being classified as our major curb cut in and out. I know you said there was um, separate garage space parking. Can you talk about that? Sure. Uh, let me zoom up on the building. So each unit uh, has their own uh, uh, garage. Uh, the end units have uh, parking for two cars. The center units have parking for one car. It's underneath uh, the, the the bottom floor of the of the development. Where do they enter? Where do the cars enter? Which is it? They don't go around in Bahamas. No, no, no. So if you if you live in this unit here, you basically come in from here, and then you just pull in the garage. It's uh, got to be you know, the this unit here, side. over through here. So the garages are all on the side. On the side of the driveway. Yes. Yeah. you entering from Hall. I thought you said you're entering from Phillips. You can enter from Phillips or Holly. You can only exit to Holly. I see. So the only, and this is going to a uh, planning board, this application for a special it's already before planning board on other matters. What, yeah. what is, what will planning board be looking at just so we're aware? <clears throat> so they're looking at circulation because um, of the two curb cuts and the, um, that requires special permits of the business district. They're looking at stormwater. They're also looking at landscaping and building design. It also is going to central business architecture in particular to be looking at the design because it's in the central business district. Um, so there's um, use, lighting, um, pedestrian access, setbacks. On your plate are the non-conforming, is the non-conforming buffer on the east and the 
south side and then this driveway location approximate to the post office exit. So all other aspects of the proposed development will be subject to review by planning board. Okay. And the issue for us is just the request for a finding with respect to the buffers that are less than required right. and the curb cut because it is too close to the curb cut for, for the exit from the post office. The uh, additional, I think, 23 uh, parking spots, where would they be in relation to this? The, the, the parking spots are associated with each unit, so they're in the unit. There's no off-site parking being proposed oh, at all. Oh, I thought I read that there were additional lined lot. There was an additional no. lined. Okay, so that's all the parking. Yeah, the parking so, is just in, in each unit. So visitors would park elsewhere. Yes. And is this part of the project to the south side of Phillips Place, the corner of Phillips and Holly? That that parcel was part of the property. If my company purchases the church, would go with it. That's their uh, illustrative only. We're not proposing anything that, at this point, nor are we proposing anything with the church. Just the twenty-three townhomes. So, in terms of density, again. Our issues just relate to the impact of the buffers being less than the minimum required and the curb cut on Holly Street. Right. So in the in the, the point, the reason why you why in the zoning we have the buffer between commercial and residential districts is to buffer those potential commercial uses that are right next to residential uses. In this case, it happens to be going from an institutional parking lot to a residential use so there'll be residential next to residential so it's just that it's it's a commercial zoning district it's right. not a commercial use right it's a residential use right so it's sort of a technicality that because it's a boundary between two zoning districts right. commercial and residential a wider buffer is needed right Versus but, regardless of what the use but, is on but the site. despite mm -hmm. the fact that the use is actually being converted to residential, which is the same as the use on the other side of the buffer. Are, and those are single family houses along Phillips Place? Mm -hmm. not or not all, all, some? The ones that directly about this property are. are there are some two family on Phillips Place as well. Yeah, there's two family and single family in the right. vicinity of the boundary. And the purpose of the buffer sort of conceptually is, I assume both, uh, a screen, a visual screen, and noise, or I mean, is there? Any it's probably more of a visual screen, particularly as it relates to parking. I believe, um, you know, if you have a uh, because in a commercial district, there's usually associated site parking that's just different from a residential district. I don't know for sure if that's what the intent was when it was written 30, 40 years ago, or whatever, but. Um, Certain, and it applies to all commercial districts where that commercial district boundary abuts a residential district. Even and it's solely based on district boundary, not use within the site. I wonder, that's interesting. I mean, I, I, it seems like the ordinance would make more sense if it said, unless the use is gonna be residential, right. but it doesn't, and that's right. why we're here on this point. Right, and I will, just to add to that, we are in the process of working on um, an adjustment to the central business district um, which uh, which would be a form-based code and in that code we are um, looking we are um, likely going to change the language so, so that it does just that because we have these side streets that aren't in the part of the core commercial district where maybe residential would be allowed instead of commercial on the first floor and in that scenario um, we think it doesn't make sense to require these big buffers when it's a residential against a residential. Right. So that's the way the ordinance is heading. Right. Um, there are ameliorations, ameliorating some of the um, site issue by the row of trees. Yeah, well, this that, is, that the is the existing condition, that, that and, the and there's nothing there now. The diocese tore out all of the plantings that were there last year. And right now there's a road, so vehicles travel right behind the property line of those three homes. Yeah. In, in our proposal, where we can, we're moving the cars away from there and, and 
really putting residents to residents back to back, no different than the other side of Phillips Place. They're back to back with other homes. Although it's a, a, a lot, it's a, a lot of residences being created. Right. A and lot more are, structures than before. It is. The planning board approved a project for the same site last year that had 62 apartments. Right. And how many do you have? 23. So it's apartment. already been approved for 62. The buffer wasn't an issue for that proposal. They actually did come to the zoning board for. Uh, oh. buffer reduction at one was on this parking lot here um that's also but that's not part of your request here? I think there was I two know. it was more like three or i think i remember that yeah it was green <laughs> so did did um so this the buffer you are proposing the, the green screen i'll call it mm -hmm. tell me again what these plantings are the proposed plant the through the center, they're primarily arborvitae, although one of the residents has asked us to make some modifications, which we're happy to do. Then I think one side are flowering dogwoods, they're trees, and then on the other side, there's seven um, maple, perhaps, red maple. That I can't read the... Uh, and, and I think, Carolyn, and we're talking about not only the buffer on what I'll call the southern side, but the eastern side as well, or just along the driveway in from... Phillips Place. Where's the other? You mentioned the driveway is actually not their property. It's an easement oh. over, um, but the pro the zoning boundary is on the eastern oh. side too. And we also yeah. do not have a 30 foot buffer there. Right. And and what are those plants? It says existing vegetative buffer to Ex remain. That's correct. Um, what what is that vegetation? Uh, it's it's kind of overgrown. It's a very eight to ten foot. Uh, edge heads. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. You can't see through it. But we're not planning on taking it down. And so you said you've had meetings with the abutting neighbors? Yes. And um, and you said you, there were some, we'll hear if anyone's here tonight, we'll hear from them. But um, by the way, nothing from DPW or? or um, yes, um, I was going to pull that up. I just got it this afternoon. I don't know if it, um, I just wanted to check. I'm not sure it relates to the finding. Like the it's more planning, planning board, yeah. yeah. So I can. Uh, You'll let us know yeah. before we're done. Yeah. Well, while you're doing that, can you um, tell us about the conversation with the abutters and uh, any alterations that you've made as a result of those conversations or what the general response is? Um, really, it was information sharing. We heard their concerns. The um, middle lot of those, there's three lots that are adjacent to where we're talking about. The middle lot has a carriage house at the back that's actually encroaching over the property line. They've asked if we can hold off or modify the plantings there. I guess he wants to work on his building and if we put up a hedgerow of our provided, he can't get at it. So we're going to ask the planning board to allow us to hold off until the neighbor's done. Um, the other, we met with the neighbors on either side of the easement. They wanted to be sure that we didn't take any landscaping down, or if we don't plan to do, we're just going to put some utilities and repave the, the driveway in. Uh, and there were no other issues. In fact, one of the neighbors got up at the public hearing and commended the project. Which public hearing was that? Planning. Board. Planning board. Oh, so you've already been to planning. Board. Yeah. yeah. It was continued because they don't have a stormwater permit, oh. so they're going to come back. Um, November 14th. So I actually, all the DPW comments related to technical um, elements of the project, not the buffer. So that's all been sent to the planning board. Okay. And are there members of the public here who want to address this? Uh, I see one, two, three. Okay. So uh, if uh, if there are no more questions for now, reserving the right to ask questions after. Yes. I'll, I'll invite uh, one at a time the members of the public. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Patty Stoddard. Um, I live at 22 Phillips Place with my husband, Mike. And um, I'm speaking for myself, my husband, and actually on behalf of Aisha and Chris Flynn, who couldn't be here tonight, they're the abutters that live just next to us. So if you look at the plan, we, our home is right um, in front of where those four big circles are. That's where we're, um, we're positioned. So um, we, we are not in favor of, um, of the non-conforming buffer at all. Um, we did meet with Andrew and we talked about a lot of other things, but um, I don't think we quite understood when we were talking with him that, um, that this was gonna be an issue, that there was gonna be um, a request for a non-conforming buffer um, rather than required buffer for um, commercial use. 
And I realize this is a residential property um, and, and um, it's gonna be used for residential purposes, but it seems to me that portions of, um, of what it's being used for, the, the, the group that is, is proposing this, sometimes refers to, well, you know, this is, this is a commercial um, property, so we can do one thing, but on the other hand, it's a residential use, so we can go to the residential side. And I feel like it, it kind of both sides of the fence are being played um, to benefit um, to benefit the plan when, when it's um, convenient. So, um, so our, our biggest objection um, tonight is to say that um, we, we lived um, at 22 Phillips for about five years now. Um, we bought the home um, because it was um, in a district where there were lots of beautiful old houses with beautiful architecture and um, our, our um, street has recently been made, uh, has, has been um, named historical. Um, so, you know, we, we really pride ourselves on that street for having homes that have unique um, characteristics. Um, oftentimes, um, the Historical Society comes, um, has um, tours of our, of our street to explain the architecture, and it's just a very beautiful street along with Pomeroy um, Terrace. So, um, when we heard about the project, um, we realized Northampton is up and coming and, and is always looking for new properties and the like. But um, the property, the property is very tall, and um, to lessen the buffer between our home, which our our yard where we spend most of our time with our family and friends, is right there, as right on the property line. That's basically where we sit, and the same with the Flins. So that's really our only yard. We don't have backyards. Um, so to have the property so close to our property and um, to go with the non-conforming buffer, we would be going outside and we were, would be looking at big looming buildings that are really close to our homes. So we kind of take away from the look of the street and the look, the, look, the character of the, of the um, neighborhood. Um, in addition to that, they proposed putting up plantings, but some of the plantings that they proposed, the Arborvitae specifically, are two and a half gallon um, Arborvitae, which are only about two feet tall. So for those to have to grow, to, to provide a, um, a privacy barrier between our home and the homes that are there um, would take quite a while. And um, lastly, um, that side of the building that we're looking at doesn't really have any character at all. The front side of the building has a lot of the, of the um, roof lines and um, you know the character that's consistent with Northampton, but the back side is basically just a tall building. And so now we've got the church on the left, which is a big tall building, which was there when we bought the property. But now to have another a big tall property looming over us is just really, um, we don't feel like it's in keeping with the neighborhood, nor do the Flins. And, and we would like to ask that the non-conforming conforming buffer not be approved. Now, did, can I ask a question? Did I, have I represented you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, um, I, I think, did I represent you when you bought that house? Okay. <laughs> I should at least <laughs> abstain from voting, if not recuse myself altogether. What? Well, well, you don't have a relationship with the applicant. That's um, true. And, um, you know, you probably have a lot of clients in the city, <laughs> yeah. or former clients. But I, it's up to you. Or the, in, um, if you feel that you can. If there are any concerns. The applicant in that regard? Um, no, it's really, I think, up to um, David to determine whether you know, feel like you can view this objective. How, how would people feel if I remain and preside, but, but the three of you vote? Sounds like a good compromise. Or does that take care of your concerns? Well, Elizabeth, you're. No, I'm, I'm just trying to think through, you know. I'm the, feeling the a little bit uncomfortable. I, I, I don't think it's te a technically an ethical issue as long as <coughs> the, um, well, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable because I've represented uh, the, the abutters who have raised these objections in the purchase of this very same house, even though I don't think I currently represent them. I just am concerned about appearances. Um, but my thought is that I don't, I, per, as a suggestion, is that I don't join in the voting. I have, and, and the three of you make the quorum for voting. Okay. 
Sounds good. I mean, I, I, I'm doing the Rolodex back right. to the ethical and yeah. the conflicts, and I don't see, especially with the disclosure, <coughs> a, a technical conflict. But I think that if you're uncomfortable and if it would make the role less questionable. Or even the appearance well, of I think then, that that's exactly yeah. where I'm at. Then that's um, fine. I think that's fine. That's just, um, and and I don't that. know if I could. I assume you're okay. Yeah. Okay. And and I and I don't know if I could proceed in an unbiased manner because of my former relationship with people who were my clients. Okay. Um, that's fine. I think that makes sense. And so I think the only question is. Uh, do I recuse myself altogether or act as a moderator in my capacity as chair, but not participate in the vote? And, and I think it has to be one or the other. Okay. So I think if you want to recuse, then then that means you're not part of any of the conversation. Okay. Um, you're second in line. No, 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 you're second in line. Yeah. <laughs> um, Take it over, Sarah. So maybe what I'll do is wait outside until the next item on the yeah. agenda. Um, okay, so I'm passing the gavel to Sarah. I think okay. Sarah is the sure. vice chair, and so you'll sure. take over and preside. Okay, and I guess I'll you'll let me know when you're done. All right. Okay. This this one just feels a little too. Thanks, close. everyone. Yeah. So, we um, just want to see if there's any other so um, are there any other uh, folks who would like to speak? On this application? Yes, please come up and state your name and address for the record. Uh, hello, my name is Joe Mike. Uh, I live at 33 Holly Street. Joe, I'm sorry, what was your last name? Oh, Mike, M Y G N. Okay. I live at 33 Holly Street. Um, so this is, a, this is the first I was hearing about this uh, project. Um, I've been living at that residence for a year at this point. Um, I don't, my, my concerns right now. I don't know if this is appropriate to speak about concerns other than this specific um, issue, but I'm my primary concern is the um, there being market rate housing instead of there being um, subsidized or affordable housing for people. I mean, this property overlooks um, or is really close to a bridge where a number of people are li living, and there's um, still a number of homeless populations in this area that I feel like could benefit from there being structures built and having um, affordable or subsidized housing. There's a number of people on waiting lists and I think it would be um, almost like a crime not to take into consideration those people who are living on the streets, especially as it's getting to be colder weather. Um, I myself work uh, for a um, nonprofit uh, helping people with mental illness. Um, number of people are homeless and I have been participating in uh, helping hand out meals to people on the, um, on the Friday lunch and I think that um, I don't know just I mean like I before I lived here I was uh, like the only reason I could afford living here is I found a, a place where I didn't have to pay some deposits and stuff but I, I it's hard to struggle with this I mean I, I know this isn't not a a cheap place to, to live, but I think there's people who call this place their home and are trying to uh, survive, especially uh, living on the streets and <clears throat> hearing those people talk and asking if, like, the waiting lists and how far they are. It's, I, and I mean, it's hard. I don't, I feel very privileged to have a roof over my head. And I'm, uh, I don't know, I just, I didn't know what this project was. and. I was assuming that with the number of uh, residences there would be at least some sort of affordable housing or at least subsidized housing, um, but I'm, I'm not really sure if this time has passed to talk these things over or even. Um, and then also people talking about the, this is like really far off, but. Um, we're going to um, ask you to, um, do you have comments that are uh, specific to the matter before us? Uh, there's certainly valid points and yeah, yeah. Um, and those are usually dealt with at the level of the city council and the planning part plan, planning board um, what's before us right now is about whether um, the existing setback from one the existing building 
to the property line versus the proposed buildings to the property line. It's a very narrow thing that uh, that the zoning board is looking at. Oh, okay. Uh, so your 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 valid and uh, and interesting discussion is certainly um, good, but it's not um, under our purview. Yeah, definitely. I was I came to this uh, not knowing much about what this was going to be, um, but I saw. Um, a sign in front of the property that stated this time and I was coming here just to let my voice be heard yes but perhaps I could where would when would that discussion be held unless it has already happened talking about those issues uh, well the larger issues uh, get talked about at various city meetings pretty regularly right. uh, it's a pretty common topic of oh, affordable okay. housing and you know the projects down on Pleasant Street that have that have subsidized units and all of that that gets talked about pretty regularly uh, so uh, Carolyn is there a, I can a give you my card you can oh, yeah. um, contact me and I can talk to you about uh, there's also a public comment section at the beginning of every city council meeting <coughs> it's the first and third Thursday of the month is that right Councilor Nash yes yeah. So, um, and that's open for up to three minutes of comments on any topic. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Thank you so much. It's not an engagement with the counselors, it's just mm -hmm. speaking up. So, um, I also know that the authority has been actively trying to get vouchers for other programs in particular that's going to get some particular kind of people off the street. Um, and you said there's. Be enlisted yes. to help with that. Well, <laughs> we're waiting on the application, but yeah. Um, Sarah's right, there's a lot of conversations going on in the city, and I appreciate your comments because they are important. Cool. Uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for your initiative. Anyone um, else here yeah. to speak? Please come up and. No, I'm not sure. Joe. State your name for the uh, record. Yes, hello, Jim Nash, Ward 3 City Councilor. And first off, I, I want to recognize. O'Connell uh, Development Group for the outreach that they've done, uh, that we've worked together on doing a informational forum. We had a 40 plus people attend at the community building uh, that, uh, that people had a, got a good idea of what the project is going to look like and what their long-term plans are in terms of the different phases. Um, I was hoping that tonight that the uh, butters would be coming here uh, because they had some sort of discussion between the uh, the O'Connell and um, the butters to come forward with you know some sense of an agreement happening that um, that uh, that you wouldn't be the deciders here that there would be some sort of yeah we've come to an agreement here's what we're going to do and I'm a, I'm a little disappointed that hasn't happened. Um, the, what do you take that to mean, if anything? You know, I, I think that, you know, I've encouraged both sides to speak and, and come to an agreement and that um, I think there's been some dialogue, but I, I just wish there would have been more tonight rather than having things land in, in, in front of you to make this decision rather than, well, we have an agreement with the abutters and, and this is what it's going to look like. Um, the, um, the, the last thing I want to address really isn't, it's not part of the agenda here, but it is part of the bigger picture. And it does relate to something that the Butters and uh, Joe was addressing, which is, I think it was about seven years ago that we switched this property from URC to, to central business. And that with the intent that the, um, the church structure, that this was a way to save the church structure. That the latitude that was being allowed around development and that we're seeing right here was with the idea that the, tr the church was gonna be preserved in some manner. The, the previous um, uh, plans that were approved by the planning board um, the, uh, for a senior housing development had the church turning into a restaurant. Uh, that would be used by the the residents within the uh, the um, the project, and also it, it would be open to the public. 
And it was built on a model that uh, was actually done down in Webster Groves, Missouri. And I'd been to that restaurant. And it was actually, it's a really nice restaurant. Um, and so it, it was a model that seemed like it could work. Um, the, my worry here is that here we are, we're early on in the project and we're allowing latitude for a development and the church remains a mystery. You know, it's it, that, and that, and part of what I'm doing here is holding O'Connell's feet to the fire. I, I know this isn't for you guys to decide, but that, that in the interest of, you know, the, 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 the public, you know, that we voted to change this to central business. But it's not about, you know, getting, you know, variances and things like that. It ultimately gets back to preserving that amazing church structure, which completely defines the street. And um, that, um, that if we were to lose that, um, I think it would have an even bigger bearing than if, um, you know, than I, this is a very dense project going on here. Oh, and the last thing I want to mention, it really relates to what Joe was saying. If this were still URC, there would be affordable housing requirements going in for a project this size. No? No. Not at all? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good try. It was a good try. All right. So, uh, this really is a question. So, O'Connell, or who owns the church now? The church. The church. The Roman Catholic Diocese. So, but the, so the only piece that has been purchased is the piece we're talking Nothing's about. Nothing's been purchased. Okay. Nothing's been purchased. There's an option. And so does they, the option include the church? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's one yeah. parcel. Yeah. OK. So as um, um, Andrew Crystal related previously, if they do move forward with the purchase, it would also include this lot across the street. Andrew. But they, right, the whole, all the holdings. OK. Which, uh, I mean, you're right, you already said this, that that's not what we're considering tonight, but it's just an interesting piece to think about. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Anything Thank else you. that you well, want? Well, that, that's really it. Yeah. Okay. That, Thank you. It's kind of a message to the developer, the, the, public, the spirit of the public to so change I, this property. Well, I have one more question for you, which sure. is all total hearsay question and would not be probably admissible um, anywhere else. but. Um, in the hearing or the meetings that you've had in the neighborhoods and the 40 people that have been there, mm -hmm. has, what's been the sentiment? You know, um, there, I would say the biggest concern is parking. That, that, this, that this project is relying on on-street parking for visitors, which is what everybody in the neighborhood depends on which is what many of the workers downtown depend on. The <coughs> Phillips Place and Holly Street in this area is, is prime, prime parking space for workers downtown. Um, that um, it's, a, it's the end of, uh, Holly Street is, is uh, or Phillips Place is where the non-metered parking begins. So it gets full, I, I've counted 40 to 50 cars on the street during the daytime. Um, the height of the buildings concerns the neighbors, uh, be, um, but they're within the, the zoning for both, the, the height is within the zoning for both URC and central business. Um, so I, you know, we can say we don't like it, but zoning allows it. Um, the parking, did I, I can't it? imagine what the density was before when it was 62 units. Coming down to 23, that must have been. It was a lot higher. A lot higher. <laughs> yeah. It was further away, though. Right, it was to the, the other side of the lot. Yeah. Well, it was a big mass thing. It was 55, 60, over 60 feet. Mm -hmm. And neighbors were told a lot of old people would be there looking out their windows and not doing much. And, um, and I expect that seniors will also like this location as well. Um, and the sentiment in favor of it? You know what, it's, it's hard to gauge if people, I, I, I can tell you that uh, some of my constituents who are up against the project, abutters of the project, they're very concerned about it, and that, um, that, uh, that people, people do want to see the property developed. Right now, the, the, um, 
uh, as it is, it's, it's, it's abandoned. There's, the police are often visiting the site because um, uh, different things are going. It could be IV drug use, could be just people hanging out. Um, so okay. it's a plus to have this site developed, most definitely. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak on this application? Can I just add one more thing? Uh, if you keep it brief yep. and to the point, yes. I just want to say in, in um, response to Jim's comments about the height of the building, um, he said that you know the height of the building is allowed, and so there's nothing really to be done. It's allowed for residential and it's allowed to com for commercial, but the the um, non-conforming buffer is not allowed unless there's a special variance that's granted. So again, we're talking about some things that are allowed for, for that are currently allowed, and we're talking about other things that need a special variance to be allowed. So, you know, I kind of feel like feel like um, we're um, we're kind of um, helpless in this situation because um, we're trying to make our voices known. Um, the the butters that are, are right there are trying to express um, how we feel about this and. We're really, we're really against a non-conforming buffer because of that height of that building, which is allowed. But somehow, when a tall building like that is pushed further away from your your home and your yard, it's not as as imposing as it would be if it was right there, um, close to your home. So that's what I wanted to add. Thank you. Um, I just mm -hmm. clarify: there's no variance involved. Um, it's uh, what's before us is a finding, correct? Right. Yep. So the, it's, it's there's an existing permit. right. There's it's an existing. Variance, it's not a waiver of any sort. It's a it's a finding. Right. That it's <coughs> not a, right. It's allowed for anybody that has a currently a non-conforming situation. So mm -hmm. if there's a change to a parcel with a non-conforming situation, then it gets then anyone any applicant can come to the board to ask to either maintain that same non-conforming situation. Mm -hmm. Or in some instances, as we encourage them to make it a little bit better than the existing condition. So uh, what they presented was a change in the situation to make it more than what's there now. To the um, a, a butter's point that the uh, the buffer would serve to push a building further away, which uh, that's in general that's the whole point of having a buffer. Um, and which would decrease the effect of a, of a high wall. Closer away, you can get further angle, you have like, of course, the north side. Of, uh, <coughs> right. In any case. And it's a, just so you know, it is, it, they're, they're townhouse units, they're 35 feet to the uh, peak, they have gable and roofs. So it's not the massing that's there now, which is just one big box of a, mm -hmm. um, um, it's not as tall. Right, I think it's 25 feet to right. the peak um, around that. Um, right. And it's just, that's one big blank one wall. Big blank wall. Well, not right. blank, but one long continuous facade. Yeah. We'd have liked to see elevations. Um, I have those. He's got um, So, uh, before we uh, close to the happen. Yes. Yeah, if I could just respond to a couple of things. Not, not only is that height allowed, it's required. There's a minimum height requirement in central business at 30 feet. This building measures by the city's regulation 35 feet. So we can make it five feet shorter, then we'd need a variance. Um, the uh, planning board allows a 20 foot buffer behind um, their home, the Stoddard's home, there is a 20 foot buffer before the pavement patio. It's the next house up. I believe it's the Flynn's who I've had multiple conversations with this week, uh, offered to meet with them again today, which they declined, uh, who did not express any concern to me about the um, let the setback being not meeting current conformance with regulations, but being better. Their concern was that they had access to their building, which I mentioned earlier, we've agreed to. Thank you. Um, all right. So, in the interest of following. I'd like to speak to the size of the trees. I'd like to hear um, 
the abutter who's expressed yeah. concern about the height of the plantings you intend to put there? It seems mm -hmm. kind of small. Those I can speak to that. So uh, a two and a half, uh, the, the arborvitaes, uh, let me zoom up on, on them here. Uh, the, 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 um, here we go. The, uh, the plantings that we show uh, on the site represent growth at two thirds maturity. So when you look at, when you look at these buffers here, and you, and you look at these, these are representative, these are the arborvitaes through here, and that represents growth after about five years. The, uh, the, the plants that are specified are two and, a half, uh, two and a half gallon pot, and they range in size from about three and a half feet to four and a half feet. An arborvitae grows on average about a foot a year. That's why uh, for we have arborvitaes, we specify them uh, by pot size because you can, you can get them. They grow very quickly, and then they're intended to grow very densely uh, and growing together. What are the uh, the four trees at the here? Yeah, yeah, at the end. Uh, those are dogwoods. Those are CKs. Those are Kusa dogwoods. Those are two and a half inch calipers. They grow to be thirty foot tall with a thirty foot spread. Mm -hmm. But they're bare in the winter. Yes. True. And then to the right of the arborvitaes, as we're looking at it. Hang on one second. This is um, the yeah, Sugar maple. Or no, crab apple. TOs. 23 TOs and then seven. TOs are, oh, arborvitaes, and the other ones were? There's seven trees further along, those are crab apples. Crab apples. And uh, those are 18 foot tall with 15 foot spreads. And this um, the, this key indicates two gallon arborvitaes, but you're saying they're uh, two and a half? Two, uh, no, two. Yeah, what, what's on the plan? And you said that's a three, <coughs> three and a half to four feet at? Yes, at, at planting, it's three and a half to four feet. Uh, they grow about a foot a year. And that's essentially using the buffer, right? Uh, it's actually more uh, of the buffer. So the existing, uh, on this plan here, just so I wouldn't have to flip uh, back and, and forth, uh, in this plot right here, you can see this line right here? Mm -hmm. That's the property line, and this is the property that uh, with the abutters that are here. So we are saying right now that we are providing a buffer of 22.8 feet, which basically goes from the property line to the backs of these patios through here. So the building is another 14 feet beyond that. We went to a hard surface because the finding that we're asking for is to a hard surface. So if we're, go, if we're, if we're comparing to the building, the building is another 14 feet, so the building is 36 feet from the property line. The existing hard surface from the same property line is 5.6 <coughs> feet. So if hard surface to hard surface, you have 5.6 now, we're, we're providing 22.8. And uh, the earlier plans that you have there are the existing ones when we first started our presentation. That was the red line that we showed. The, that red line on the other side of that red line, that's a driveway. So everyone who accessed the parking lot drove down that, that road. There are no cars in this area right now. So when you look at those facts, it's our opinion that as far as a, a finding goes, we are meeting the criteria for making what is there better. We are still non-conforming, but we are improving what's there. Uh, what I'm seeing, it looks like the um, the face of the building is pretty much lined up where the existing building line is now. The, the building is going to come down. Mm -hmm. you, you, that, I would say that's correct. Yeah. Very yeah, um, this, this building right here. This, this one that is closest to the right. Scottons and the Flint, that is mm -hmm. at the same line as the existing building. They're not coming closer. And you said these are gabled roofs, so there's not going to be any rooftop gardens essentially no. creating I, other. Things. I have the elevations if you'd like me to flip to them. I don't know. I think the description was okay. Yeah. So just trying to respond to the. Sure. Yes. It's a uh, not colonial, 
style building. Uh, I can't it's, remember the name yeah, of it. The, the, it's uh, right. yeah. Yeah. Right. No, it's okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think we have what we need. Um, so that's the question. You think we have what we need? Are we ready to close? I need to close the public hearing. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. So the public hearing is closed. We won't be taking any more testimony. The public meeting will, cons will continue. You can stick around if you want. Come to the decision if you can. Um, and um, we have any further discussion? Thoughts on uh, no, the specificity of our finding? My thoughts are that um, they're making the best use of the existing buffer area as possible, extending within uh, code and the construction and placement of the buildings. And I can feel for the abutters who would be so close to those three stories, but I can't. Um, favor a change based on what's okay as a development from my perspective. And I just wanted to double check if you found the DPW comment if there's anything relevant to our purview. No, it's all okay. technical planning okay. board related yeah. items yeah. related um, to utilities okay. and stormwater. And, and I, I pretty much echo what Maureen says, uh, you know, it, it's, it's being less non-conforming, um, it's being made better, so I don't think it's... Um, and, um, so it's been continued at the planning board level, right. meaning there, will, For be, other there will be another planning board a public hearing? The public hearing is still be? open. They continue the public hearing to okay. November, well, till tonight, but it's going to be continued without discussion tonight to November 14th. The Central Business Architecture application hasn't yet been submitted, so they still have Central Business Architecture hearing. Thank you. Um, any further discussion from the board? Do we have a motion? Yeah. Um, I move to approve the finding to make the, as requested, the finding to make changes to the buffer um, as requested. And you have to include the curb cut change. Um, yeah. The change is requested, yeah. So the curb cut in the buffers. And the curb cut as well, yes. Second that. All in favor? Right. So voted, yes. Okay, so yes. Yes. So that's not tonight, it's coming No. Thank you, folks. Thank you. 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 I relinquish the chair to the pie to our chair. <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess we're ready to hear the second item on the agenda, the yes. request by Truly LLC for a finding for a change in the site buffer tree planting parking lot layout, curb cuts at 216 North Street, Northampton, Mass, 216 North King Street, map ID 18-7. Good evening, I'm Jesse Alderman. I'm attorney for the applicant, John Furman from VHB. He's doing double duty tonight, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, Dennis Greenwood is the architect and record on the project. And walking in the door just in time is uh, True Leaf Cannabis Corp's uh, director of business development, Camillo Basto, who's here with us tonight. So. You brought samples, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. Uh, uh, John. The camera's not running right now. It actually is. <laughs> okay. Uh, good evening. I'm John Furman, Director of Land Development for VHB, uh, and we are here for uh, to uh, present uh, information for three findings that we have for this property. Uh, again, uh, it is uh, 216 North King Street. Uh, I have the plan set in front of me here. This is the existing condition survey of the existing property. 
and uh, uh, truly will basically be, or in life essence, doing business as truly will be a, uh, a tenant in a portion of the building. This is actually Valley Motorsports. So uh, just for orientation, this is the outline of where their space will be, over here. Um, they're a tenant in this building, and under the zoning code, uh, a reuse of the building, uh, the, the, the zoning code requires that the, the property be brought into compliance with current zoning regulations. As a tenant, um, we don't have the ability to make all of these uh, improvements, so that's why we're here um, to, uh, for three of them in particular. What I'm going to do is just uh, go through quickly, um, there's really not much uh, in the way of site plan changes. Again, this is our site plan. What I want to do is go to our landscaping plan where I've identified um, the, the three ver uh, uh, finding requests. Um, so the first one, I don't know if there's any order of which they were presented in your paperwork, but uh, the first one is for the number of curb cuts. Your zoning uh, ordinance limits the amount of curb cuts per property to one. This property has three, and that's under section 358.8G. So there's one curb cut here on Hatfield Street, and there's actually two curb cuts onto uh, North King Street. Uh, Mass DOT has a project going in right now. They're basically uh, designing a roundabout for this intersection. So what you see here is the projected curb line of what will be left for us once that project is done. So we've actually accounted for the work that's that's going to be here. What's the timeline so, on that, do you know? I don't know. I'm not involved in it. Do you know, Karen? I'm sorry. Do you know the timeline on the roundabout? On the roundabout? Yes, it's going, oh, geez. Um, I think it's going out to bid later, like any minute. At least a couple of years. Well, right. The completion will be a couple of years, but the project itself actually right. is either out to bid or will be out to bid momentarily <laughs> so um, as a tenant um, you know uh, knowing that uh, that's a zoning requirement we approach the landlord and the landlord is not interested in reducing the amount of existing curb cuts that are there so uh, we don't have the ability to act on that so we're here uh, for finding to actually ask that the curb cuts that are there remain um, there that's our first finding request uh, the second finding request that we have uh, actually deals with uh, landscaping buffer. So under section 350, 356.5A, um, there's a certain requirement and a certain depth for landscape buffers along the frontage of properties. Um, this is an existing development. If you are familiar with the site, there is no landscaping there at all. Uh, it is a seven foot buffer. After the end of the Mass Highway project, Mass DOT project, there'll be about a four foot buffer left on our property. So um, we are proposing that we basically plant trees within that buffer, which we have shown here. And we are requesting a finding, which would allow us to uh, leave the buffer with the way that it is right now. And the oh. landlord will allow the plantings? He will. Um, to kind of offset the request for that. This is a, uh, 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 the owner here, I think is Marked Motors. It's a car dealership. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are proposing to close this curb cut. And it's basically just kind of an inter cross curb cut. He has got another curb cut right here. You can see the end of it. And we are turning that into a planter. So while we are not providing the width of the planter that we get all the way through here, we are adding plantings here on our property so you'll get additional plantings on the side it really does not tie to the to the finding it has nothing to do with the, the landscape request we're just hoping that that might additional landscaping might help make the area look nicer and, and help uh, with your decision the uh the last finding request is this blue oval here uh, and that has to deal with parking uh it's section 358.8a under your uh, zoning code, you require uh, parking spaces which are eight and a half feet wide by 18 foot long, and the minimum drive aisle behind them is 22 feet, I believe. Karen didn't look at me, so I'm going with 22 feet. So, um, <laughs> no, we can back up. <laughs> so 18. 18. Yeah, we have we have uh, 13 feet available to us. Um, 
that is uh, impacted by uh, a fence that goes between the two properties. There's a four foot high chain link fence that has frequently been backed into and is now bent over to the park where it's reduced what we have to available for us for a, uh, a drive out. So as part of uh, the project, we will be pulling that out and we'll be putting in a guardrail, double faced. It'll have a very narrow profile to it, steel post, but the beams will be bolted right to the to guardrail. And that will gain us one foot on that drive out. So we'll be going from 13 to, to about 14. How do you gain a foot? Because the fence is bent over like this. When we measured the drive aisle, we oh. measured it from where the fence is. Okay. Yeah. But from where the fence is, is cemented in, it's not going to get you anymore. It's that's no, that's right. If you drove down it, you would have a I huge did. scrape down your car. So. Well, yeah. I didn't do that, but if turning around was interesting. Yeah. So those are the three requests that we have in front of you. Any questions from the board? Just hope this a long-term contract, please. On the that, property. Um, that Hatfield Street entrance. You don't intend to use that. That's not how you're going to navigate the public to your no. entrance. No. Uh, anyone coming to the facility would be directed toward the street address, which is 260 North King. Uh, they would not find their way to North to Hatfield Street. But the landlord won't let you block it off. That's correct. So the 13 foot drive aisle, um, the customers will pull in to the angled parking spots and then come out and then they back up and then do they continue forward? Uh, no, they would they would have to back out the way they came in. There. The uh, this uh, where the significant tree is, they have to. They, they, they can't. The, the, the drive aisle doesn't go any further than that. Awesome. So they they basically come in from uh, North King Street. They pull in, then they back out. There was a um, uh, an office type of situation here before as a previous tenant, um, and uh, it was a, a health health clinic. I think it was Service Net. I believe is what it was called. Um, and they had frequent people coming in. They did not see patients here but they had their counselors always coming in, getting case information and then coming out. So they had more traffic than a typical medical office might have it, uh, but they did that same thing for as long as they were here. They would they'd pull in, then they would back out. So they did not turn around. So they have to back out. That's what I had to do. Yeah, to the front drive, to that drive out. Right. Um, so, Okay, and we get, get to the other sheet where I'm looking at this. So the, the dark line is then the new edge of pavement? Uh, on this plane right here? And is I that what you're looking at? Needed to create travel path to roll out dumpsters. So the tree's going, and the dumpster's there, so. So you're, trees, you're, you're looking at our site plan? Yes, now look at C2. I have two sheets, C2 and L100. Right. So, so that, that, is not, that is not correct. L100 says the significant the trees remaining. Tree it stays. is the tree stays. Yep. It's this, the only tree on the property. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This doesn't. This is not getting moved over. So this has to get reworked. The the dumpster that mm -hmm. was was here um, is going to be a roll off dumpster. So there will be a pad back here, but when it gets serviced, it will get rolled off between. There's the pavement line is is right at the end here. It'll get rolled off from here to here. It'll get picked up and then it'll get push back in. It's a small dumpster. It's not one of the big large ones that have to be moved. Mm -hmm. So that, that's incorrect on that plan. And it, it's, if I remember correctly, uh, if I could drive forward past the significant tree, that's a pretty steep it is. hill up to Half Hill Street. Yeah, from, from the parking lot here uh, yeah. to the pavement of uh, Half Hill Street, I'd say it's probably from 10 to 12 feet vertically. Yeah. Really, uh, uh, you could do wayfinding signs too. I mean, to, you know, to help just clear it up, but nobody's getting past that tree. Right. When, That's uh, right. It's <laughs> a fair amount of traffic for this use. Uh, it's pretty consistent with what was there before, and you know, honestly, in the greater Boston area, it, let me say that the aisle is not the drive aisle is not ideal. Hence, the request for the finding, but it, it's it's consistent with we've seen smaller and the, the dispensaries that are open in the greater Boston area where the lots are obviously tighter 
Um, we've well, tested it out. And it's course. medical, not okay. recreational. Correct. It's medical. Sir, it's medical, not recreational. Yeah, you're going to see. It's a, not open to the for public. Now. Gotcha. For you're going to see a fraction of the traffic that yes. you see over on the net of folks. So oh, I'm yeah, gonna, oh, yeah. Right. It's, it's not recreational for point. now. It's yeah. medical. Yeah. So only certified patients will be able yeah. to attend. From the using and using the uh, uh, the traffic numbers uh, that are in the uh, Northampton City Zoning Code. We're expecting an increase over existing of about 41 cars, not significant. So when you say for now, is there a, a, an effort to... Now. Uh, <laughs> 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 I just, honesty came from this end. Yeah. <laughs> so there's an attempt to expand into recreational. It's not, it, it's actually honestly not clear at the moment. It, it, it's an option that the, that the applicant is considering but they have not made a final determination at the moment and we, we expect that conversations with the city would need to progress quite a bit further uh, before that, if in fact they decided to. So, it, thank you, I, sorry to interrupt. It no. seemed to me the front building is vacant and abandoned. Is that correct? The a portion of it is. Whatever that was. A portion of it is. Uh, the majority of it's used by Valley Motorsports right now. Okay. So there's no parking in the front? Or is there, there is parking in the front. There is no, uh, I know that. No, no, no. I, I, sorry, I miss. I miss said that. There's parking in the front. Is it going to be usable for this business? Yes. There's a, there's how many spots? There's uh, there's uh, sixteen along the building. No, but how many are reserved for us? We show it on a different plan. Oh, I don't know that we have that here. Just. Uh, we may not have it on the plan before you, but I believe there's twenty-two total. So there's I think six in the front. Six yes. in the front for our use. And then the ones along the side. That's right here? A, no, the other side. Let's say existing spaces, parking spaces. Those the, here? Yes. Those do not belong yep. to the tenant. Those do not. So the lease has designated parking, parking spaces, spaces exclusive. Yeah. Use I, have, this yeah, I have to say, I mean, it was backing out of there was, you know, you have to back out of there. Mm. I suggest everybody wait on taking those gummies before they're <laughs> backed out and turned around. I'm not supposed to do that anyway. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, saying, but to clarify, and I'm sorry if you explained this already, you're not really altering the existing parking along that side, right? right? I mean, that's how people park right now anyway. Correct. Yeah. The, so you're the changing only... the fence to a guardrail. Yes. So people may hit it, but they won't see it, but they'll feel it. They will certainly feel it. Yeah. Um, and your is there a sidewalk that goes around to from the front from those whatever six reserved spots? There is not. There's no sidewalks on the property. Is there going to be a mirror to see people coming? Going? Um, mirror because if for somebody if somebody is in the furthest parking lot closest to Hatfield and they're pulling out and backing all the way down that alley. The, so that is why we thought it was important to close this parking, this drive aisle off, because it prevented cross traveling between here. No, I think she's saying, John, if there's somebody back, if there's somebody maneuvering out from here, that's, and then that's right, a coming back patient down. walking down. Although I don't believe they'd conflict except for these three parallel spots, mm -hmm. because that's the entrance. So there, it, there would only be a conflict between a patient coming from the front of the building and these three parallel spots. Just three, uh, three spots, right? Well, no, vehicles are still backing They're down. They're backing yes. all the way down from. But it's the, the, the entrance is here, though. It's not a deal. Not being yeah. used right now. <laughs> well, no, this was used for quite some yeah. time for an intense use. I mean, a, a use that's yeah. no, nominally I mean, it's less fine. intense. It's just, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just. It seems to me that really just goes to marketing and business yeah. planning, right. not the yeah. right. R issue. Right, you're right. In other words, I don't think that relates to the question of whether it's significantly more detrimental. It's, it was, it's the same as it was before. And other things are being improved. But we still need to provide a finding on the parking. Right? right? That it's not significantly more detrimental. Yeah. Yes. The existing yeah. condition. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's just it's the no use worse. that's changing. The parking isn't yeah. changing. Right. Well, right. That's it's right. the amount of use. All right. All right. I'll stop. All right. But there are other, could you elaborate a little bit on the ways you're improving the, the site, ameliorating the nonconformity or reducing? On which issue? Um, any of them? Any of them. <laughs> sure. 
if you um, uh, here's a, a, an enlargement of the uh, landscaping plan your plans don't have these colored ovals on it so as far as the curb cuts go right you, um, yeah. there's existing we're not changing them and, yeah no you, you've mentioned you, yeah the, the green oval on the, on the right is right. an improvement it, it's an improvement so we're adding in these these plantings through here and then we are adding street plantings uh, across the front right. through here the landscaping is a substantial improvement right and it brings because pretty, right now there's there is there's no nothing planting. there's nothing so it brings pretty close to to conformity at least with the spirit of your frontage requirements right. for the highway Right. Bring some business to the area that right so, um any any other questions before i ask if, is anyone here from the public who wanted to address or ask about this application Seeing it, i see nobody um do we have any issue around lighting or is that premature um we'll you can ask about lighting this is going to the planning board because actually this requires a site plan approval the medical marijuana requires site plan there's some, um, I believe there's some changes. They submitted a lighting plan for, oh, okay. um, yeah, for Go the ahead. planning board. Okay. Good. Would Thank you me. like to see that? No. No, <laughs> the planning board is going to look at it. I don't, I don't feel the need. I don't either. Okay. Especially turn them around here. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, and it's online if we want to read it anyway. All right. Okay. So, and, uh, and, motion and, to close please. the public hearing. Second. All in favor, I guess I'm voting again. Okay, thank you. That's unanimous. And a motion on the request for the finding and the application. Do you have that in front of me? Um, I'm willing to sort of frame it. Um, yes, I move to approve the application for findings um, for the change in the non conforming site, uh, including the buffer tree planting, the parking lot layout, and the curb cuts. Um, as not being more detrimental than currently exists. Second. Second. Any discussion? Or no. None needed. All in favor? That's unanimous. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. One more and it's a hat trick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want me to delete those? Well, uh, no, because you need them for uh, the planning yeah. board, right? I do. Yeah. yeah. This will be here? Right. So let's get the hat trick on. Um, yeah, I'll be here in another half hour. So I don't have any minutes for you all. I don't know. Parting comment. Yes. Having chaired the city's planning board for 10 years, I commend you on your self restraint and knowing which responsibility lays where. It doesn't always happen that way. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's our special thing. <laughs> Uh, so no minutes for this one. Right. Uh, what, <laughs> what, 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 uh, November 14th, there'll be at least one item. It's a five-carry. Okay, I'm going to show you the I didn't bring them on. There won't be one on the 20th. Go ahead, Peter. Just set it out. That's Thanksgiving, right? Could we also check Bob that the 14th is if that day is my son's 30th birthday i don't know if we have a plan but it feels like we should um and he may be with other friends but um i'm gonna put it down but maybe we can check with bob and if everyone could just get back to care it's okay with you and maureen you'll check thanks i think i'm good okay so let me just check uh, i'll just put a note to myself tomorrow to check with bob just i mean i can i don't know there's no specific plan right now but it's a big birthday um, I'm close public oh, oh, right. oh right Sorry. yes are we are we done yes. yeah second and that's unanimous thank you.